Good morning. It's eight o'clock in the morning. So it's Tuesday after our Sunday um, home and garden. And I wanted to do a little ch chat with you and share with you some of the things that have been going on and some stories about our garden and so forth. And I did a quick scout and I says, my God, I have to walk the garden and talk to you about it. Okay, so I had to move these tomato plants just outside my door so that they would get more sunshine. That's a big tomato plant and it hasn't really got flowers yet. But this one to the right has got tomatoes on it already. And there's an orange one down there. I think this must be the tomato plant that makes cherry tomatoes, the small tomatoes, and the other one makes big ones. My brother finished up the deck on Saturday morning where some of the pots were sitting and we've had rain and high humidity and it's still kind of tacky. So I won't walk there. So my herbs are doing just fine right outside my kitchen door. And I want to show you how beautiful these New Guinea impatients are doing. Would you look at these? Oh, and notice the fog. And it's foggy right down to the ground. So that must be 500 to 1,000 feet. You, you know, you couldn't fly, you couldn't take it off and fly in fog that. So the geraniums are starting to take off and they don't seem to be um, bothered by the impatience being about 12 inches tall and kind of covering them up. And they're intergrowing, so that's kind of fun, isn't it? You see the geraniums? I have at least three in each of these. Now, when I lived in Atlanta a thousand years ago, I had red geraniums in my boxes and white trailing petunias. I haven't seen trailing petunias in decades. That doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means I haven't seen them. Oh, Larry is weed whacking. I don't know if you can see him up there. So he's not working quite as many hours a day. And the plan is always to get out early and stop by one or two o'clock when it gets really hot. Maybe we'll come and sit on the veranda with my coffee and I'll share some stuff with you. We'll talk about the Fiji water if I remember. I got this for my guests. And isn't it interesting how this Boston fern does so well here? It's the only thing that really does well because it doesn't get any direct sun all day long, but it's doing great. And I just set that, those pots in with the asparagus fern. That was a little, um, hydrangea that, you know, was it like Sam's, the pretty pink. I need to plant that out in the ground. And there's a dragon begonia. I think that's over from my leftover from the last four or five years in the greenhouse. 
rather nice. Okay. All right. Well, my, I, my plan is just to show you a couple of things out here. And, oh, isn't that getting ready to pop? This is a double pink. Impatient. And this begonia was really big last year. I'm selling this one. Let me see if I can pull in a little bit there for you. And those blossoms were good palm size. I, for some reason or other, I'm so hesitant to cut back the begonias. You know, they, they ought to be cut back, you know, and allow to come up fresh. And well, those are impatience coming up. I don't see, do I see any fresh growth? Well, there is some, isn't there? There might be hope. I might have to practice on that and be willing to sacrifice a plant in case it doesn't do well. So clearly we had some wind last night because we have, bunch of, we have branches down. Wind is God's pruner. Oh, there's some more of these. These were such pretty double pink impatience and I kept them over the winter and did cuttings. Okay, here's the hooker garden. And would you look at all the branches in here? Major branch fell down, or got blown down. Look at that. We've been watching that. It's just, it's not safe for Larry to get up on the big ladders anymore. Come and drag that out, aren't I? These coral bells are incredibly resilient, and I don't think even the ones that look like they're smashed a little, I think they'll be okay. But I'm gonna have to pull all that stuff out. Oh. Well, the colliers are doing all right. Sure, taking their time to thicken out, and look at all of the of the color we have from the impatience that were so tiny. Let's see if I can get up there. I don't have the right shoes on for this job. But look at that. These are the ones that reseeded themselves and I spread them. Do you see all the blossoms? They will be dense because they'll get five to 10 inches in diameter and maybe that much tall. Okay, let's sit and talk for a little bit over a cup of coffee. I have to learn to move the camera more slow because I've noticed some of them doesn't look fast by my eyes, but it looks awfully fast by the camera. So the bees are out already this morning. I need to harvest some more tree, oh, more seeds off of the ornamental kale. I want to plant a whole bunch of that up there by the in patients and the hostas, because the hostas will die back in the wintertime, but the kale will keep going. And wouldn't it be pretty to have big, big stand of, of purple kale up there? There's more of those double pink in patients. Let's see if I can get around here. It's so, I want to use the word heartening. 
really builds the heart, nourishes the heart to see things growing and thriving. You know, for those of us who took care of human beings and saw just how, um, usually seeing people, often seeing people at crisis or the end of their lives. I know you do the best you can, but anyway, it's not, it, it's very good for nourishing our hearts and giving us a good, to see things grow. And I'll never forget, there was those women back in the 60s that were so vocal, the fe feminists. I'll think of their names, there's a couple of them. The one who, who wrote a book, and I remember one phrase out of that book, she says, for most of the world, children are the community's entertainment. And I went, wow, I suppose that's true. They don't have televisions, and maybe they don't have access to books or can't read. Watching your children grow up and play and show their love and affection for the people around them. Ah, okay. I have to show you one more thing here. I did the, um, five days ago, I filled my bird feeders for the hummingbirds. And it's funny how they have favorites. Now, sometimes the reason they avoid one of the feeders is because it's been infested with ants and the moats didn't work. But look at this one, it's, it's, it's all empty, almost empty. Let's see if there's anything in here. Yeah, there's a little bit in the bottom. A little bit in the bottom when I, okay, a little bit in the bottom. But that's two cups of, of sugar water. And the plants are in full go and they still, well, maybe they have babies they have to feed, and that's why they need extra food. Okay, our, our, my, I think my brother and his wife have, have lived here for about 38 years, and they bought this second house just next door and up the hill. Um, I don't know, we'd have to think about it, probably 25, at least 25 years ago. And the, the um, younger son lived here with his wife for a while. Um, so that must be 15, 16, 17 years ago. And they always gardened a little bit up here. And when various people lived here, they gardened. The owners who built this house were, um, I remember meeting them when I came to visit one time and they were building the house and they were very much about using uh, paint and carpet and things that, um, you know, were non-toxic and not, you know, wouldn't contribute to her allergies. Of course, Larry had to repaint and replace a lot of the wallboard and of course they've had to replace the carpet because it was trashed so badly by the couple that lived here before me. The insurance man was said it was the worst case of disaster inside of a house from, that he'd ever seen. Okay, what was I gonna share with you? <clears throat> that you might have questions about. Well, my, the, my brother and sister-in-law have been very big about growing native plants, things that are indigenous to the you know, mountain areas. So there's a lot of, when I take you on tours and Joy shares what some of these things are that we're looking at, that's pretty incredible. 
uh, she was really big about hostas. I, she said at one time they had 800, and I know there's a lot of varieties of hostas, and they certainly have a lot. She says she thinks she's down to around three or 400. Because the deer come through, and sometimes, for the most part, hostas are very resilient. Another plant that's extremely resilient. They, the, the deer can come through and eat them down to three or four inches above the ground and because they have such a good root system, they will flush out again. So, at least in my garden, they don't come through and decimate a whole, a whole stand of, of hostas. And it's mostly in the spring when they're, when they're tender versus when they get big and they're probably not as delicious. And Joy says she never had any luck with, with hookah, the coral bells, the one, that big area I'm doing at the entrance. And they're getting, they're getting a couple, three hours of sun in the morning. So I think that helps a little bit. Oh, the hummingbirds are busy today. You know, it's funny about visitors, unless they're an honest-to-God gardener, like a master gardener, people don't know what they're looking at. And they tend to stay in the house and just visit. And I think it's part of our, um, the way our, our culture and society has been influenced by we now are beginning to understand rather nefarious energies in the past to keep us, you know, glued to the TV, virtual reality, and they can decide what kind of programming we get, and it's literally programming, just like brainwashing. So it's very interesting. Oh, we have a hummingbird. Let's see if I can move slowly and not scare it. And these are the cheapest hummingbird feeders available, depending where you buy them. A couple dollars, maybe four dollars. And the hummingbirds love them the best. They always go empty first. And I have some of these others, like the red glass one that's right behind me. Well, I think that, that might have been 12, 15, 18 dollars. It's crazy, isn't it? Look at that. And it's not landing, and some of them, the hummingbirds will land and perch and drink for, I mean, 10, 20 seconds at a time, sometimes a bit longer. So I've lived here about six years now, almost exactly. Ooh, the hummingbird's still here. Let's see. They chirp. And the blessing about hummingbirds is, well, their poop is very, very small, but I never see any evidence of it. And I can't, if I put out a regular bird feeder, for one thing, they scatter the feed everywhere on the ground. And that attracts the raccoons and the possums and the bears and the deer. And they poop like crazy around where they eat. And you know, who wants all that white stuff on the grass or whatever is below the feeder? Oh, and squirrels. What squirrels? 
squirrels. We have a white one and it roams. We, I've talked to people that I've met out in social situations that live two to three miles from here and they talk about their white squirrels. So this, these white squirrels roam. They have a big area that they You know, birds have their own little territory. That four-wheeler is such a lifesaver. Stop. Maybe he's going to come over and say hello, in which case I'll excuse myself. But you can hear the birds. So it's about 70 degrees and the humidity is like 98%. Things look damp, so I don't know whether it's from the humidity or if it actually rained last night. There certainly was a wind that came through. Well, thank you for sharing the garden with me this morning. I really do appreciate. Oh, let me share with you. I have two different garden clubs that are... Um, thinking about coming and bringing their clubs to the garden. So I imagine in the future, um, we'll have organized groups coming to see the garden. Won't that be fun? People that actually can appreciate it. Well, it's up to you. Garden clubs, you know, special dispensations for people that really can appreciate the garden. Jenny and her husband at Gardening with Creekside that are about a two hour drive away from me. They're in Dallas, North Carolina, and they have, they're a little bit warmer uh, growing than we are. And of course they're commercial growers, certified, proven winners, plus their own garden that, you know, visitors can't, can't go see because it's their private home. And they had an event here a couple of weeks ago, limited invitation of only 50 people. And they did tours of the commercial part of the garden uh, project, the specialty garden, uh, the specialty garden uh, for proven winners. That's not the right word, specialty. Anyway, special display garden of things uh, uh, proven winners. It's about a year old. And of course, their own private garden. And it was an all day event, about 12 hour event. Private time with people from proven winners and Walter's garden and a beautiful dinner under, under a tent, proper table settings and chairs and so forth. And they charged a thousand dollars for that. People from, came from Canada and all over the United States to come visit their garden. Oh, oh. oh I was sorely tempted. Sorely tempted, but I'll budget for it. How about that? I'll budget for it for next year. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for with coffee this morning. Sitting out here on my front veranda. Oh, there's another hummingbird coming. Oh, flew away already. You know, 
where the Boston Fern is there on that banister. I had a, last year I had a hummingbird feeder, oh, you know, about 18 inches down for the eaves. And it kept getting tipped over and pulled off its thing. And, and I come out in the morning and the thing was scattered everywhere. And of course that meant there was sugar water all over my, the floorboards out here. You know, you could rinse all day long and you don't hardly get all of the sugar off. And then you have to worry about ants coming. Well, I invested in a motion detector camera and set it up out here. And I had like five raccoons that came and inspected everything on my deck. Pulled a, a hat off of the table onto the, oh, onto the, oh, my brother's out there taking care of the, let me span you over here so you can see. He's, he's picking up all that branch that um, the wind blew down. He's been talking about pruning that down for a long time, but you know, you really need two people when you do tree work. Somebody to make sure that the ladder stays steady and um, can help stabilize things. So he's busy cleaning all that up, bless his heart. Ah. My hero. Oh, let's finish the raccoon story. So, I set up this camera to, so I could see what was happening because I thought maybe the bears were coming up and, and you know, swatting at it. And that's how come they were getting, um, spilling all over the place. Well, it turned out it was the raccoons and they were climbing all over that banister. They'd walk up that thing like a tightrope and they'd get up to the top and they stand on their hind legs and reach up for that red hummingbird feeder, tip it up and drink it with their paws on both sides of it, drink it just so happily. Well, I was new to the camera and that whole situation and I didn't get it saved. You had three, you had a month free and then you had to sign up for, you know, per month fee and I, my natural inclinations to not do that whenever possible. It's too easy to forget about it. And before you know a whole year's gone by and you've spent X number of dollars and it adds up and you could have bought dinner three or four times. Oh, let me, one other thing to share with you about the cameras. There's little blue and red lights that flash. I guess they must change colors when it's on and when it's filming. And you know, the, the, the raccoons are so curious and they came up and they chewed the thing apart and got their little teeth on the lens so that now it would, regardless of whether there was any motion or not, it would take a picture every two minutes. So at the end of a 12 hours, I had 12 times 30 pictures. 12 hours, and, oh, there's 60, so 30, yeah, 30 minutes, 30 times an hour, it would be taking a picture. The other thing that was attracted to the, the light were the spiders crawling across my lens. And they look like uh, aliens. So the spiders were, uh, an interesting issue. And then the Luna moss, you know, the ones that are like five or six inches diameter, were also fascinated by it. And they would dive bomb around the, you know, the camera. Interesting. Capture possums on the deck at night. These are all night creatures for the most part. Well, thank you for sharing today with me. It's been a real pleasure.